but oh, it's getting my ire up. I just had somebody post on some message board or something that he thought, you know, having a moderately sharp broadhead didn't matter because the amount of damage from his flapper would, you know, supersede having sharp broadheads. And uh, that fixes everything, and that is absolutely freaking ridiculous. So stay tuned. <laughs> Physiology. John Adams. Swords. And I found a use for an FMJ finally, because they suck. Stay tuned. <laughs>
I don't know the last time you cut a steak, but I think you didn't hit your knife when you set it on the meat and hit it with a hammer or your fist. A, a blade like that for cutting tissue is not designed to, to take that impact. It just, I just want you to think about that, is that the blade goes in and then it's, it's sitting like this and then it goes like that and it's slamming, physically slamming into things. The first thing it's going to encounter is, the hardest thing it's going to encounter on a good hit is a rib and a rib's just gonna flatten the blades, most likely. It, it has a pretty high potential to flatten the blades. A little constitutional history here. John Adams, uh, during the Boston Massacre, John Adams was given the task of defending some British soldiers who were firing on the crowd of Americans. Obviously he was, you know, his interests were divided, but he was an attorney assigned to defend the British soldiers. And he said, facts are stubborn things. And whatever may be our wishes or inclinations or the dictates of our passion, <laughs> they cannot alter the state of facts and evidence. So now we're gonna get factual. Whole medical thing, respiratory therapist had a human cadaver for a long, long time. And we're gonna talk about the what for and what happens and why your broadheads need to be sharp. I did this in a previous video. You're the, when you shoot through an animal, the vessels are large and then they get smaller and they get smaller and then they get microscopic arteries and veins you're shooting through this stuff and i can already hear your wheels spinning well father I'll tell you what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna cut the big stuff off and then that'll fix everything it's a great plan but if you can get a broadhead sharp enough that you get an exponential amount of damage down to microscopic level, the efficiency and the short blood trails will, will show up. There's no arguing this fact. If you only damage one thing, maybe a big vein, they're going to be able to run further than if you damage all of this stuff feeding everything and get to this level. And this is where the real sharp broadheads do the most damage. You're talking about a massive, you know, exponential amount of damage when you cut everything as you go through, rather than maybe this, okay? You'll probably get your deer, I gotcha. But you can't get past the physiology of the fact that everything goes down to microscopic level. There's these little things called alveoli in the lungs, they're little air sacs. And uh, you want to damage as much of the arteries, veins, alveoli, everything as the broadhead passes through. If it's blunt on impact, then it's not going to. It's only going to damage whatever, you know, it's not going to do the exponential amount of damage. Stuff's going to move out of the way. Or it's going to ride over the blades when they're dull or flattened. If your broadhead is this flat at a microscopic level, when it goes through the tissues, Arteries are semi-muscular, so you're only going to do vein damage theoretically, and arteries you could ride right over the blades to the microscopic level, because the duller it is, the tiny stuff's just going to laugh, right? The big stuff's going to roll over. Trust me, man, if, if you've never tried to stick a needle in somebody right here and draw an arterial blood gas, this <laughs> artery right here that's in between the tendons, it wobbles around. And it pisses people off when you have to stick them two or three times because you look incompetent because sometimes, well, you are. All right, on to the next physio physiology lesson. I cut off a piece of PVC with regular cutters. You see how clean that is? And then I took a hacksaw blade. So a lot of people say, well, put a bird edge on there. Don't have to be that sharp. It'll shred the hell out of them. And that's what it looks like at a microscopic level. You see all that stuff in there? There's a fact called the clotting cascade. And when arteries and veins are damaged, your body kind of responds. And then there's a, a strategy within the blood cells themselves. Basically it's fix a flat and it starts clinging onto these hairs and trying to seal stuff off. Once again, these guys, if they're not cut clean, they get sealed off the fastest. Do not go back on me on the big stuff. I gotcha. You don't want to give a, your animal a chance for things to start corking up with the internal fix-a-flat, the blood clotting cascade. You can look that up in the Ashby writings or just Google it. It's a fact. Kind of crazy. Facts are stubborn things. Okay, on to sharpening. You're going to have to try. 
Don't email me, please, and say, I want you to show how to sharpen the curved Windinger XYZ, and I want it to be the 175 because that's what I've got. You're going to have to try. So don't email me that stuff. I'm going to just do the basics of sharpening, and you're going to have to go forward with it. I've got some tools I'm going to show you, but you're going to have to try. There's no easy button. So I cut off a piece of wood that represents a single, uh, single bevel broadhead. It's a pretty blunt edge. Don't worry, it's much flatter on a broadhead, but nonetheless, I cut it off that way just so you can see it. You want to get your sharpening device. This is a strop, and we'll cover that in a minute. You want to get your sharpening device to run the blade like that. You don't want it like this, and you don't want it like that because that just sharpens the back. It doesn't get on the cutting edge, which is up here. You want it to ride like that, okay? That's why we're going to probably, you know, talk about using jigs and stuff. You want it to be perfect. So if it's like this, you're going to blunt the edge off, and the blade angle is going to get real real severe, and it's not going to get as sharp. And if you're here, you're just going to sharpen the back, and you're going to say, well, the fruit ain't sharp. Yeah, you know, no doubt, because it's not down. Okay, that's the beginnings of sharpening. With a double bevel head, it's the same way. you got to get the bevel to ride on your sharpening surface, whether that's sandpaper or a stone or a strop. It's got to ride at the correct angle each blade. I recommend on double bevel heads that you don't sharpen the hell out of one side because it'll move over and then you'll sharpen the other side back and it gets to be kind of frustrating. You want to keep it pretty even. Three or four strokes, flip it over. Three or four strokes, flip it over. You know me, I try to find a reasonable solution price-wise. So this is a Stay Sharp system. There's a guy named, he's got a website called Innovative Outdoorsman and he's got three jigs. This one's for like iron wheel or for Magnus. You can contact him and ask him, you know, what kind of head you have. This one's for regular fixed blades like Zwickies and stuff like that. And he may be able to clarify whatever broadhead you've got. And then this one is for single bevels. It's got the angle and it's a little bit easier to use on some of the bigger fixed blades. He's got a full system. He sells you a kit with uh, plexiglass. He's got videos on his channel on how to use these tools. KME makes a, a similar tool. It's a broadhead sharpening tool. It's made out of aluminum. You use the same process, run it back and forth. They have videos as well. And YouTube, you know, it's out there. I've referenced this gentleman before. He's got a website called Outdoors 55. He's a knife sharpening guy. He's got great videos, easy to follow. Go there. You have to try. Facts are stubborn things. Whatever your wishes are, you might have to put out some effort. You might blunt off some broadheads. But you can't go running around with half ass sharp broadheads. You know, it's irresponsible. Completely irresponsible. Any broadhead. I touch up every head that comes in here to a certain level. And I run them on a strop. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Because that's a key thing most of you probably should own. They're not very expensive. And they're, they're, <laughs> they're miracle workers. So onward toe. We're going to uh, talk about the strop. And then I'm going to have a little bit different angle here. It's going to be annoying for a second. And that's that. So uh, hang on. I wouldn't want to leave the excitement out. I finally found a use for a full metal jacket. Break one of them damn things off because they're not worth a crap. And then make yourself a sharpening stick out of it. It's great for that. The hit insert doesn't matter. You won't blow it out because of the pressure. <laughs> so if you got yourself an FMJ, just break that thing off. Throw the back end in the trash, get, make you a sharpening stick. I like to do this. This is a 225 tough head. It's one of the longest he, uh, single bevels out there, and it, you know it, that presents a little bit more of a challenge. The stuff that's shorter will do the same process. And then if you're sharpening a double bevel, it's the same process. You just got to strop, strop, strop the double bevel on edge. You can find it, and then move forward and practice and try. So it wouldn't be a video if we didn't have the wizard and iron wheel right out of the pack. Runs it on a strop. And you can see the major difference in the blade sharpness. But, you know, it wouldn't be a freaking video without the wizard. 
So this is a paddle strop. I got it off Amazon. I um, bought the widest one I could because I knew I was going to shoot the tough head, and so it goes there. This side is the rough side, and this is a sharpening compound. It came with the kit. And stropping is really pretty easy. You just try to find, you get it to touch. And this, these broadheads with the ferrule, I just ride the ferrule. You can get, you know, over here and try to get it really crazy, but it's uh, way easier if you just ride on the ferrule and don't push hard. You go backwards on a strop. So if your broadhead is moderately sharp, you want to touch up. I use the, this is the you know, rougher side. And you just, it's just the weight of the broadhead, back and forth, okay? Just like that. This is actually doing a whole lot more work than you expect. I was very surprised when I first started doing the strop. It's Big Mike's fault, and thank God he's around because this thing is a miracle worker. So here we are stropping it, okay? We're just using the pressure of the broadhead. We're not pushing hard. From what I understand, I've been told, the leather actually wraps around at a microscopic level around the edge of the blade like that. So if you if you push real hard, it's actually grabbing the blade and it'll dull it. I found that out the hard way because I'm a man and I was going to do it the hard way. So I strop this side, get a little edge off, wipe that off. This is the slick side. This is just slick leather, no compound. Unbelievable. And you just... Run it, you hear it whistling. If you get one that's pretty dull and you practice, you'll find it, you'll feel it gripping early on. It just, it's a little more tension. This is no more pressure than the broad head. And you'll feel it grabbing and then all of a sudden it'll just slick out. And you just sit here and strop it. This is something you can do in camp when you're sitting around drinking beer with your buddies and maintain your broadheads. Keep them very sharp. This is all you need to do if you haven't shot the broadhead. Just touch it up, check it, and strop it. Doesn't take five minutes. This is a piece of uh, really thin paper. An instruction manual on something I bought. Not quite there. So we're gonna go back to stropping. See how rough that is? You hear that? sound. You see that hairy edge? That's not there. It's it's sharp. My 10 bucks says it shaves. Oh, look at that. It's picking up material. Remember the microscopic pictures I've got in my other videos? That's bad. It'll pick up fat and stuff. So we're going to go back and keep stropping. And just keep it even and don't push and it'll come along. boring and as you play along you'll get there see how, how tiny I can get it Come on. that's sharp in Wojo's defense I banged this around a bunch shot it some and then um, dropped it back out so that would simulate something maybe you shot a deer with you cleaned it up and you went back to stropping. Happens on every, goes, it works with every broadhead. You're just gonna have to put in the time and you're, you're, to be real honest, you're irresponsible if you don't do this. If you don't maintain your broadhead sharpness, you probably shouldn't be out there. I mean, it's just, you're, you're just gonna have long blood trails and you're gonna email me and say these, these broadheads don't work. And why didn't the deer just run 35 yards and die well? Because you were shooting them with a friggin' butter knife and you didn't maintain the edge. There's plenty of time. You're sitting around a house watching television, not reading books about, you know, interesting topics. You can waste your time watching YouTube with me. That's the only exception to reading books. <laughs> but if you'll take your time, constantly check them during the hunting season when you're banging around, stuff like that. You know, check them every week. Check them daily. And what you'll feel when they're right, you'll learn to feel it. It's what the, what the knife sharpening guys call a butter edge. It doesn't feel that sharp. It doesn't hang or grab. I used to think a grabby edge was sharper. And when I started stropping, you start, you touch it and it's just not, 
it just doesn't feel that great because it's buttery. Just smooth as glass. Right through there. So it just you just got to put in the time. Um, most of you guys, have, you know, this is your first adventure into adult broadheads, and I really do want to emphasize this is a big deal. So you can get a jig, you can get the one for Stay Sharp from Innovative, Innovative Outdoorsman. You can go on KME's website. If you are shooting the Maasai or something curved, you're going to have to learn to come around that curve on the strop and just play with it. It can be difficult. Um, and as I said earlier in the video, I'm not going to do 10,000 sharpening videos on how to sharpen each individual broadhead. Um, it just, you're going to have to put your head down and do it. So that's the Ranch Ferry. We had a little bit of a history lesson, some physiology, <laughs> plumbing materials, a sword, strop. I mean, why do you not want to watch the Ranch Ferry channel? You should hit the subscribe button because then you might learn something. And, uh, or you can remain stupid forever. Philosophy and all that stuff. Found a use for an FMJ, so we got that going for us. Keep your broadhead sharp. You want the maximum amount of damage. You want a complete pass through. And you want those deer to not feel a thing. Run about 25 or 30 or 40 yards and fall over. Why blood trail? That's lame. Ranch Ferry out.